Welcome! In this video we will learn about the history and legacy of the Geiger counter. Geiger counters are most often thought of as a safety tool to protect ourselves from radiation, but that's not what its original purpose was. And furthermore, you might be very surprised to discover how this invention is impacting our world today. So stay tuned as we discover some very interesting facts about Geiger counters that you probably never realized. At Geiger Counter Pro, we make discovering radiation enlightening and exciting. Geiger counters have not only been around for a very long time, but they continue to be one of the most utilized radiation detection systems around the world, even today. Their ability to detect alpha, beta, gamma, and x-ray radiation make them very versatile for measuring radioactive contamination and exposure rates. Geiger counters' ability to simply and reliably measure radiation makes them an excellent tool for protecting ourselves from radiation, but that's not what their original purpose was. To understand how the Geiger counter came into being, we need to first go back to around the year 1900 when there were scientific investigations centered around trying to discover the invisible structure of radioactive atoms. Wilhelm Rentgen's famous discovery of x-rays in 1895 and Madame Curie's discoveries of radioactivity from polonium and radium between 1898 and 1902 led the way to a concerted effort by several scientists to probe into the invisible universe of the atom. At that time, the only detection device available was the human eye. The fact that radiation was not only invisible, but undetectable by any of man's senses explains why it lay hidden since the beginning of mankind. Given radiation's stealthy nature, these early experimenters relied on secondary evidence that came from exposures to photographic film, phosphor plates, early electrometers, and other crude devices. These early experiments pointed to mysterious subatomic particles and rays exiting atoms which broke the long-standing belief that atoms were the smallest divisible building block. One of the prevailing theories of the atom's inner structure was the plum pudding model put forth by Lord Kelvin and later modified by J.J. Thompson, who had discovered the electron in 1897. Thompson's theory suggested an even distribution of negatively charged electrons surrounded by a volume of positive charge. It was likened to having negatively charged plums embedded in a positively charged pudding, hence the plum pudding name. One of J.J. Thompson's former students, Ernst Rutherford, devised what is now famously called the gold foil experiment to test the plum pudding model. Assisting him in this effort was German physicist Hans Geiger, whom he first met in 1906. Rutherford was so impressed by Geiger he asked him to join him with his research, and Geiger did so and played a very pivotal role in a series of groundbreaking experiments that were published from 1908 through 1913. At Rutherford's behest, colleagues Hans Geiger and his undergrad student, Ernest Marston, performed a series of experiments where they pointed a beam of alpha particles at very thin metal foils to measure how many alphas passed through. By using a series of sealed glass tubes where the air could be evacuated, they noticed a scattering of alpha particles when shot through very thin gold foil. Observations of this effect were made using a microscope coupled to a fluorescent screen. Any alphas interacting with the screen produced a very faint light flash. Geiger and Marston would have to sit in the dark for long periods of time to acclimate their eyes in order to be sensitive enough to visually count these weak flashes. It was a very painstaking and laborious process for which Rutherford himself had absolutely no patience. By 1913, Geiger and Marston had built a larger apparatus that enabled them to better observe the extent of scattering of alphas which revealed it spread in all directions. According to Thompson's model, the alpha particles should have all gone straight through. Instead, what they found was that some alpha particles bounced off the metal foil and scattered in all directions, some even right back at the source. Commenting on this unexpected finding, Rutherford said, It was the most incredible thing that has ever happened to me. It was almost as if you had fired a 15-inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and hit you. Obviously, those particles had encountered an electrostatic force far greater than Thompson's model suggested they would, which in turn implied that the atom's positive charge was concentrated in a much tinier volume than Thompson imagined. Rutherford thus rejected Thompson's model of the atom and instead proposed a model where the atom consisted of mostly empty space, 
with all of its positive charge concentrated in its center in a very tiny volume and surrounded by a cloud of electrons. The very onerous visual counting process led Rutherford and Geiger to develop an alpha particle detector with an electric counting system in 1911. The detector was comprised of a glass tube filled with a gas and housed metal plates charged with high voltage. Alphas interacting with the gas would create a brief current flow of electricity between the plates resulting in an electrical pulsed output. Each pulse was then picked up and counted on what we would consider by today's standards a very crude counter. Even so, the Rutherford Geiger tube and counter proved immensely successful as it allowed the team to gather more precise data from then on. Later in 1928, Hans Geiger, working together with the Walther Mueller at the University of Kiel in Germany, improved upon the alpha detector so it also became sensitive to beta particles and gamma photons. This new alpha-beta-gamma radiation detector became known as the Geiger-Mueller detector, or GM detector, that we know today. When connected to an electronic counter, the instrument became known as a Geiger counter. Today, investigation into the inner working of the atom are continuing as scientists delve ever deeper into the mysteries of the atom, which seem never ending. From the humble beginnings of the early alpha particle beam and Geiger counter, scientists are now peering into the atom using the world's very largest and complex machine ever built, known as the Large Hadron Collider. It was built by the European Organization for Nuclear Research, known as CERN, between 1998 and 2008, in collaboration with over 10,000 scientists and hundreds of university and laboratories, as well as more than 100 countries. The huge collider lies in a tunnel measuring 17 miles in circumference and is buried up to 574 feet beneath the surface along the France-Switzerland border near Geneva. The Large Hadron Collider has two particle beam accelerators that create particles traveling close to the speed of light. The beams travel in opposite direction in separate beam pipes and are then brought together to collide with one another. The effects of the collision are captured by a large array of detectors monitored by very high-powered computers that track every escaping particle, noting its type, trajectory, velocity, and energy. The main goals of the Large Hadron Collider are to answer key unresolved questions that include the origin of mass, discovering what dark matter and dark energy are, and why there is more matter than antimatter in the universe, and many more. Neither Ernst Rutherford nor Hans Geiger could have ever imagined how their little particle beam experiment using a crude detector and electric counter would have resulted in the wide array of popular Geiger counters used around the world today, nor how it continued to evolve into the world's largest and most sophisticated beam experiment that continues the work they started. So when you next hold a Geiger counter and hear that familiar clicking sound, hopefully you'll appreciate the significant role it played in discovering the basic atomic structure and how it began a whole new field of particle physics that continues to probe ever deeper into the unknown universe we call the atom.